since Cardinals won the World Series in 2011, their seven worst starting pitching ERAs have occurred since the start of 2015. So if you think about that, in other words, this problem that has really exploded this year, this, this was creeping up on us all. And we know about it because we all raised Kane about the 2021 season. Where is the pitching? They had to go out and find – they sent Gersh out. I think they might have actually given him a, given him a drone to kind of like scout out locations or something. <laughs> but they've somehow found, found Wade LeBlanc out there and uh, some others – and uh, so they've been scrambling and during the season, you know, filling in f- for solutions. They've done a good job. But why scramble when you can take care of it before you have a reason to scramble? So um, but their seven worst pitching ERAs have occurred since the start of 2016. And during that stretch, the Cardinals failed to qualify for the postseason three times, soon to be four. And they won only four postseason games while losing 11. So the mediocre starting pitching was made worse by an outdated style that emphasized ground balls over strikeouts. And, oh, by the way, uh, you can do both. It's not an either-or thing. You can do both, you know. So that's another weird Cardinals thing, you know. You can have a strikeout guys who get ground balls. That's good. Um. So Mo on Monday made it a point. He told us that, well, the Cardinals got to change their philosophy on this. Got to have more swing and miss. Okay, okay, sounds good. But what took you so long? This, didn't, this isn't anything new. This, this isn't just something that developed over the last couple, three years. Um, but it gets back to what we all know with the soft NL Central providing a lot of cover in a lot of ways and a lot of years. The Cardinals saw no reason in their minds to think they had to change much of anything. But now they're talking about changing it. And it's just so – they're so tardy in this. They're way behind the industry. And that's what I'm talking about when I say I don't know that I trust John Mazalak and Bill DeWitt. I don't know if I trust them to be able to maximize this trading deadline and also to maximize – their haul, or even if it's just one starting pitcher in the offseason via free agency, I severely uh, or seriously question whether they will do that. They haven't earned that trust yet. They just simply haven't. Um, so anyway, I, I wanted, there's a couple of things I wanted to throw at you. You, you know, when we, when we think about the Milwaukee Brewers, we think of, I mean, well, first of all, you think of Craig Council, who's been fantastic. I think the best manager in the game, really. Um, and then you think of pitching. You think of run prevention. You know, they've had hit or miss offenses, but they've always had good starting pitchers. They've always been able to put together a really good bullpen, even if you look at it and you're like, who are those guys? They're doing it again this year. So the start of the – here's where the Cardinals – this is like the dirty little secret – You know, since the start of the 2017 season, the Brewers have a better winning percentage than the Cardinals. It's by 16 percentage points, despite the fact that the Brewers spend a hell of a lot less money on payroll. Now, that should bother Bill DeWitt, and I keep talking about this. You know, we all holler, spend, 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 spend. When they spend, what do they get their money's worth? They get the value for the dollar? Ask the Milwaukee Brewers. They get the value for the dollar. Mm-hmm. Cardinals do not. I mean, they just simply do not do that on anything that's a, a consistent basis. So, um, over the last seven years, the Brewers have spent – this is their 40-man payroll, last seven years including this one. They've spent $888 million over that time. That's a lot. But it ain't $1.3 billion. That's what the Cardinals have spent over the last – uh, seven seasons. So the Cardinals have had a huge advantage financially over the Brewers. And why are they trailing the Brewers again? You know, why are they 11 games back uh, into the third, just about the third week of uh, July? Um, the Brewers just know how to spend wisely. Always? No. Nobody bets a thousand. Generally speaking, though, they're really smart and get making sure they get value for their payroll investments. The Cardinals have become the opposite. 
Cardinals used to find all these guys, the devil magic thing. I, the, the Brewers are now the devil magic team. I don't know how they find these guys that do all these things where you're like, wow, that's impressive. Guy was out there on the streets. So if you look at the Brewers now, and this separates the two, because, look, the Cardinals have a much better offense, even though Yelich is having his best season since 2009, 19, pardon me, but the Cardinals do have the much better offense. But here's the difference is the pitching, of course. It's always pitching, just about all the time it's pitching. And why the Cardinals let their pitching get shoddy and inferior, I tell you what, it's kind of disturbing to think that these are the people running things. They didn't realize by letting their pitching staff sort of go down the toilet that there would be severe repercussions. We're seeing them this year. Anyway, uh, for example, let this season the Brewers are 10th in Major League baseball starting pitching era cardinals the 25th and then john Mose, like yesterday has got the audacity well we've had injuries uh, oh i didn't know brandon woodruff was one of your guys oh that's interesting when did you get him yeah because he's been out since like this first week of the season and he he used to be milwaukee's uh you know co-ace with burns Oh, so when Mo whines about, well, we have injuries. Did I miss the trade that sent uh, <laughs> that sent Woodburn to uh, St. Louis? Did did I miss uh, the, the trade that sent Andy Ash, Aaron Ashby to St. Louis? Uh, the the really good looking lefty, the young guy who's out all year with a shoulder. Um, all these guys the Brewers have had on the IL did. Um, when did the Cardinals pick up Wade Miley? I must have missed that too. The Brewers find pitching, man, and they know other and you know, uh, and I know this is becoming an easy target for me. If it bothers anybody, I apologize. Betty Lee Andrews Miklas raised a good boy. He told me to treat people well. I fail sometimes, but anyway, uh, they don't have. Uh, they don't, you know, I'm, Council's a really smart dude, and their front office is incredibly smart. They know how to make use of technology. But during games, you don't see their pitching coach, like, feverishly studying something on an iPad screen. They, don't, they just don't have a touch for pitching anymore, and it's the number one thing holding them down. I mean, like I said yesterday, people get really distracted very easily. Like, uh, the, you know, the Wilson Contreras stuff where Mo uh, did it to him again. More on that later. Where it's like the, you, you shouldn't be talking about who the catcher. You know, you shouldn't be talking. You need to be talking about the front office and how they let their starting pitching and then therefore their bullpen uh, collapse and fall behind the industry standards, which, by the way, they used to be in the top three or four consistently in terms of pitching and run prevention. They let it go to hell. Don't worry about whether uh, Contreras is going to get as many at-bats at catcher as Ivan Herrera. Don't worry about that. It's a side issue. In the big scheme of things right now, it's insignificant. But everybody gets distracted by gossip and speculation. And you're all ticked off at the Cardinals. You should be. But please do not miss the point of why this has happened. So let me tell you this, and this is the thing I, I did this morning, and it really, frankly, did not take very long. Um, since 2017, no major league team has won the World Series without being ranked number eight or better uh, in the regular season in starting pitching ERA. And a lot of those teams have been three, four, two, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you you got to be in the top eight. History tells us you got a hard time getting to the World Series or winning it. Uh, except for the 2022 Phillies, no World Series runner-up, runner meaning a pennant winner, ranked worse than sixth in starting pitching ERA. So even if you didn't win the World Series, they got to the World Series, and none of them, except for the Phillies, more on that in a second, uh, ranked any worse than sixth in starting pitching ERA. Uh, and even those Phillies had an above-average rotation. They were 13th last season in regular season ERA because of Nola and Wheeler. So it's not like they were terrible the way the Cardinals are hanging down there 25th. 
So if you want to li- if you want to win, sorry, at the highest level, when you get to the tournament in October, you better you best bring a loaded, imposing rotation to the tournament. And Mosaic and Cardinals chairman Bill DeWitt are squaring up to the obvious reality after letting their starting pitching slide or believing, well, we get all these ground balls, we'll be all right. No, you better be able to you better be able to smoke hitters. Uh, in the postseason as well. You need you need the gas. And they have some of that, but not enough, I would maintain. So that's why, again, you got a schlub like me who found this stuff in 10 minutes. Well, what's the correlation between regular season starting pitching and whether you have a chance to win the World Series? Are we behind? Bill, are we behind? I don't think we're behind. Yes, you are behind. You're way behind, you know, because you better be in a top eight of rotation ERA if you want to win a World Series. And you better be in the top six, except one one exception. You better be around a top six if you want to get to the World Series. And the Cardinals are not close to either one. So that lays it out. That's where they have to go. That's where they have to be. But are they going to do the half measure thing? And the half measure thing is like, you know, and look, I know it's a lot of money, but, you know, instead of like pursuing Aaron Nola or uh, Ian Snell or I'll give you some other names or even Max Scherzer if he opts out. I'm just throwing out names. Mm -hmm. Um you going to go for one of those guys or are you going to go for whoever the next Steven Matz is? Like, seriously, you can't, you can't ha- do these half measure things anymore. You used to be able to get away with it, but you've lost your touch with personnel and getting, uh, getting auxiliary help out of nowhere, the devil magic thing. You're not doing that anymore. You got to have much better starting pitching, period. And you can't try to... Uh, circumvent it. You can't try to get around it. You can't try to like, well, we got one guy who can strike. Beat. No, you you got to have much better starting pitching. That's what the modern form of baseball in terms of the postseason, that message has been sent loud and clear, loud and clear. And is anyone going to wake up down there at Bush Stadium up in the executive offices? I think it's a legitimate question. It's not a mean-spirited question. I think it should be asked, do they even understand what it takes to get to a World Series anymore? It it starts, big surprise, it starts with starting pitching. That is the number one factor by far. They need it. They don't have it. They haven't had it for a while. Texter just says, hey, without Walt, uh, Mo has been just average as far as I'm concerned. He's made some good moves, but it's been a while, yeah. you know, and he'll always be able to take credit, I think, for, you know, the, the Arenado and uh, uh, the Arenado and Goldschmidt uh, acquisitions. But Bill DeWitt had a lot to do with that. He was able to work it from an ownership angle. Uh, but, look, they made, the, they made the trades and they get credit for it. But in terms of pitching, no, they've slipped and slipped and slipped. And I just gave you all the numbers. And uh, they still haven't gotten the message. So – Maybe Moe's big confessional yesterday where he uh, at least wanted to try to show some humility. Maybe, maybe that's a sign that they're, they're finally figuring this out. They're finally coming to grips with where they have gone wrong and what needs to change. That's my hope. But again, I don't know that I can count on them to follow through and actually do something about it because – when Bill DeWitt, Scott Boris, Jordan Montgomery made it very clear they were willing to negotiate before the start of the regular season, Cardinals had no interest whatsoever. So I'm supposed to believe that they're going to go big game hunting in free agency for starting pitching, uh, in the, you know, coming up this winter. Mm-hmm. Why, why, why would I? Why would I possibly believe that? It's a guy they have and they like and who's been outstanding, and they're just like, oh, no, 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 no. Just brushed it off. They had no interest to even have discussions. 
So why am I supposed to believe that they're actually going to go after like a big time starter? And it doesn't have to be Montgomery, but I'm just talking about an upper, yeah, upper level starting pitcher is what I'm what is is what I'm referring to. So anyway, Jim, this goes, and I, I've said this to you before. This goes back, and I and you told me why, but again, uh, back to like a Lance Lynn type situation when he's a free agent. You know what you had in him, you and he was your guy. He he didn't knew everything about your your situation in St. Louis. You should have kept him as, instead of going out and trying to find somebody else's problem. And I would say the same thing with Jordan Montgomery right now. You've seen what he can do. He's been more than good here, and he would be an asset to you if you re-signed him long-term. But no, instead, you're probably going to go out and try and find somebody else's problem that didn't work as well and try and rehabilitate that. that that's just silly, and it's wrong, and it's not a good way of doing business, and that's how you end up where you are right now in last place. It, it And... To that point, if you sign a middling guy, a guy that's just a three-starter or a four-starter, right now, as it constitutes with this coaching staff, Bernie, I, I don't have any confidence they can make guys better anymore. They don't have no, that and, leadership, you know? And that is critical. That is critical. It's not just the spending. And I told you uh, there was a great piece in The Defector by a baseball analyst named Roth, and I will uh, – I will fetch that, and we can talk about that. But, yeah, it, he he said, look, everyone's w- worried about spending. Everyone's concerned and having, uh, you know, having uh, heart palpitations over wins above replacement or this or that. It's like, no, he, here's, here's where it starts. Can you make your guys better? Or if you get a guy from somewhere else and you think you can make him better, do you make him better? That That's the secret of, of what baseball is right now. That's who gets the advantage. It's not the analytics people. It's actual hands-on coaching, astute eyes of observation, and a deep knowledge that you can fix things and you can show a guy, you can open his eyes by fixing things. That stuff actually matters more. It's kind of a little bit uh, return back in time. Because that's what uh, Dave Duncan did for all those years. Oh yeah, go get uh, go get Jeff Weaver, man. He throws. So I can I can get him fixed up, mm-hmm. and he did. Right. That is but one of the great cases. You're right. It, that's one of many, many, many examples. And that kind, I I fear that that's actually gotten lost along the way. And I know the Cardinals. It's funny because they know that I've been just going nuts over this. The coaching staff. So they made sure – I'm surprised they didn't take out an ad on, you know, Bally Sports Midwest or maybe buy a whole page uh, in the Post-Dispatch or wherever to, to let everyone know that Willie McGee was working with Jordan Walker. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, good. I love Jordan Walker, but he's still terrible. And wh- who, who was supposed to be working with him last year in the minors? So th- th- this press conference yesterday with Mo, there's all these little things. A lot of it, until I am proven wrong, and I hope I am, a lot of this is covering your own butt, you know? And I, I'll change my view when I have a reason to, uh, which I think is, uh, is fair. Well, we're one hour down. That's good news. I haven't I haven't killed over yet. You haven't, and that's good. We had a uh, listener type type in Woody Williams is one of those guys too. Oh, what? there's been so many of them. Yeah. yeah, Woody was one of the best examples. Chris Carpenter. Yes. And Walt Jockety signed him to a bargain contract because Carpenter feared his career was over, and the Cardinals were smart and said, "You just take you just take this entire year off, and you get well, and then we got some stuff we want to show you." Yeah, that's another. I mean, there's so many examples like that, you know? Yes. Unbelievable. They, you know, you started talking about the Milwaukee and how they do things. I mean, they did that with Julio Tehran this year. Right. I mean, he's another guy. They, they, Their whole bullpen is made up of guys that are thriving because they took him off somebody else's plate. They were failing there, and they're all doing – they're having their best seasons ever, all those guys in that bullpen right now, just because – what they do there, and also, obviously, Craig Council has a lot to do with managing a bullpen. But man. And they, um, they, you know, when they brought Wade Miley back, people thought they were nuts. He did spend some time on the IL, but he's doing a hell of a job for them. Yes, it's another one. Good call. 
I just, that is another factor in this, Bernie, that, again, I just don't have faith, one, in Mo and the front office going out and getting legitimate talent, but also I don't have the faith right now that they can fix anything. We had a uh, somebody on Twitter tweet at us over the weekend, and they pointed out to me that Libertor was god-awful in the start. He walked seven guys in his start it's on just, Sunday. It's like, how is that it's possible? Like they, they can't even come up with anything to make them you know, competitive. Yes. He's awful. And I feel I'm, in, I'm embarrassed that I thought he was ready. I'm, I'm totally wrong. I've raised my hand. Make fun of me. It's fair game. I can't believe that they have no, there's no way that they can try to make him better. Whatever they're trying, it's wrong. He's getting worse. That's a classic example of what I'm talking about or mm-hmm. what we're talking about, you yes. know? Agreed.